Hello everyone and welcome back. This is Maximum Golf 101. Um, my name is Tom Bertrand and I am going to be bringing you the rest of the series uh, in successive weeks of Maximum Golf 101. Um, what I have with me right now is I have a couple of different clubs. These clubs are gonna assist me in doing the setup correctly and then practicing it thereafter. Um, or originally you're going to need a, a regular club and if you have a practice club you can use that um, as well but probably not until you get used to the ball position in the setup all right this is my practice club that I have actually made from one of my McGregor persimmon woods uh, I made this thing probably about 20 years ago maybe 25 and um, I use it around the house constantly. I'm practicing with my grip, practice a, a little bit of uh, motions, and practice clubs like this are, are really um, unique in that you can see the actual club face, you can actually feel the actual grip, and not worry about bumping into a lot of things um, in the house or in the, in the yard. So, um, I'm going to put this aside for right now and uh, focus on the setup. Uh, last week I talked a little bit about the uh, mental side of it and preparing yourself for the golf shot uh, to come. And now what I want to do is I want to hone in on the setup itself. Okay, What John and Ben kind of collaborated on, put together uh, to create this impact address position. Now, what I also want you to understand is I'm at home right now, okay? You're going to hear a lot, of, a lot of noises, a lot of different things, but the setup has to be practiced at home because your full attention is going to be on what your body is doing in the setup, and you need to concentrate on the movements and the positions that you're creating when you're doing the setup, all right? So, if you have Maximum Golf, uh, the book, uh, you can follow along with me, uh, open it up to uh, where uh, John starts talking about the importance of the setup and the fundamental uh, to setup, all right? So, first thing I wanna attack is the grip. Okay, John talks about the grip and how the grip has to be perfect. And if you're walking around the house with your practice club or um, some kind of a shortened club, you can actually practice your grip constantly. But for those people that don't have a perfect grip, don't worry about it right now. Because what you're going to find is you're going to find your flaws in your shot are mostly going to be created by the grip if you have your overall structure working uh, to a good degree. All right, so first things first, you have to start somewhere. So why not start with your feet together, all right? Put your feet together perpendicular with your line of flight, okay? The ball will be in between your feet, target line, perpendicular line drawn from the ball to the middle of your feet, all right? This is very important because it gives you a starting point every single time you set up. It doesn't matter whether you're hitting a 50 yard um, uh, sand wedge shot or you're hitting a 250 yard drive, you have to start somewhere in your setup. So why not start with your feet together? Next, what you wanna make sure that you're understanding is once you do have that, that starting point, when you're practicing it immediately, you don't want to worry about where the ball is, all right? Because you're creating a structure here, a structure that will be um, used to propel your golf ball to your target, all right? So, by being at home, like I said, you're not going to worry too much about where the ball is, all right? So just throw a ball down and start with your feet together all right, in this instance, we're going to have our arms and the club shaft at a 90 degree angle. This is a good starting point as well. Then we are going to bend 
from the knees and the hips, you know, the waist is going to bend down, the knees and the hips flex, and then you bring your club down to a position just above the left knee. Now when John talks about that position above the left knee, it's different with everybody. And when we talk about flexing with the knees and bending from the waist, it's different with everybody, all right? What you have to do to find where your specific checkpoint is, is to make sure that the weight stays in the middle of the feet, all right? More on the instep, instep and the ball of your feet. Because what's gonna happen is if you bend too much, or you flex your knees too much, your weight's gonna be on your toes. If you don't flex enough, most of the weight, and bend enough, most of the weight will be toward the heels. So you have to flex enough to the point where you feel stable and mobile at the same time. All right? And touching that point with the butt of the club just above the left knee. Now remember, what you're trying to find is you're trying to find where the back and the club shaft are at a perpendicular angle. So some people will bend a little bit more, some people will bend a little bit less. It all depends. But it's very important to find that position where the club shaft and your back are perpendicular. So I have my point just above the left knee, it's about four inches, because what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I hit that point every single time. That's why it's so important to practice at home, because you need to be um, doing this repetitively so that it becomes second nature, all right? So, I like I said, I've just thrown a ball down, say, and I'm going through to the point where I find my point where the back and the club shaft are at a perpendicular angle. Now, once I find that, how do you know? How do you know if you, it's, it's there? You have to do mirror work. Look at yourself in the mirror. Make sure you're sticking your butt out. Make sure that when you flex your knees and tilt your hips forward, that your butt is sticking out. You've created a nice, straight back. And in the book, John talks about putting the, the, the club against your breastbone, the crotch area, and your chin. And you can watch yourself in the mirror do that, um, and it's, it's actually kind of funny. But anyway, getting back to the setup. Once we have created a straight back, perpendicular angle with the club, on the ground, what you will notice is that the toe of the club is going to be off the ground slightly. Don't worry about that because when you go through the hitting area, in your swing, centrifugal force pulls down the head of the club to, uh, to be more uh, square when you're hitting your shot. This, if you've ever seen video or uh, still frames of high speed, you'll notice that the shaft bends this way, all right, when we're coming into the hitting area. So don't be alarmed that the toe of the club is slightly off the ground. Next, when you are practicing this, do not, and I repeat, do not get to the point where you're moving your hands away from your body to get to the ball because the structure is what is setting up to the ball, not your hands and your arms, okay? So what you have to do is once you have that point where your hand is just above the left knee, perpendicular back and club angle, you then scoot the whole structure up to the point where the ball is set up in the club face. Now, where do you put it in the club face? I've told a lot of my students, the inner line of the club face, I like to have at the edge of the ball. That then creates 
more of the sweet spot interacting with the ball. Because in most clubs these days still, in the old days they used to have, um, the weight used to be so much in the heel that you would have to hit the ball so much closer to the heel in order to get that feeling of a sweet shot. So, <clears throat> next, once we have scooted up to that point, we are all set to go through the process of moving our feet and feeling our bodies set up, not to the ball, but to our target, all right? So, when you're practicing at home, make sure you practice with that in mind. In, uh, in the book, John talks about setting your body, uh, body and mind up to the target through this type of a setup procedure called the impact address position. So, once we've gotten to this point and we've scooted up to where the ball is, we then recock the wrists, okay, because when we set the club back down, we have uncocked the wrist, so we recock the wrists, take a small step with the left, a big step with the right, turn the left foot open, drop it back slightly. How much do you drop it back? It, it depends. It's, it's one of those body type situations. When you drop the foot back and open it up, just make sure that you have a feeling of stability and mobility. Okay? So, recock the wrist, small step, big step, open up the foot, turn it about 45 degrees, and bring the foot back. I bring it back about an inch to an inch and a half. Then, from that position there, we have put all the weight on the right side as we're moving our left foot, turning it open and dropping it back that we then, from this cock position right here, we then turn the body until the butt of the club is pointing at the left hip, okay? We have 60% of the weight on the left side. We then drop the, the club head down behind the ball once again and let the right foot go down. This is the start of the impact address position. It's not completed yet. All right, because we have to go through a little bit more processes in order to remind our body of what impact is like. Remember, that is the whole point of this, is we want our body to take a picture. It's almost like muscle memory to the point where, is this what it feels like? Is this what impact feels like? All right, so once again, I am at this juncture in my setup. I'm taking a small step, a big step, and turning the weight back on the left side. I'm gonna drop the club back down, my right foot back down. Now, when you do this at home, you're watching yourself. You're setting up to a ball. You're setting up to a position that you're getting ready to engage the club and the ball. But when you're on the practice tee and when you're on the golf course, always remember you're setting up to a target. So when you get to that position, or I should say when you get to that point, of small step, big step, you know, you're getting ready to, to move your feet. You don't need to watch them anymore. That's why this practice at home is, is real important. What you have to do is turn your head, look at your target, small step, big step, weight back on the right foot, turn the left side, the weight onto the left side, drop the club down, the foot down, and you're all set. From this position right here, what is next? Well, we have to go through some checkpoints. We want to make sure the arms are set inward. We want to make sure that the shoulders are relaxed. They're not up into our ears. John always talked about practicing, you know, what the feeling is like for tense shoulders and then what it feels like for relaxed shoulders, okay? So making sure that that our weight 60 percent we want to make sure another checkpoint is that the the angle of the right leg is there because the weight goes against the inside of the right foot when we start our swing we want to make sure that the butt of the club is pointing toward the left hip 
Okay, arms set inward, back is nice and straight. At this point, we are ready to pull the trigger. All right, what trigger do we suggest? We suggest the turning press in maximum golf. And what's the turning press? Well, the turning press is a trigger to start the swing that completes the impact address position. All right? What we haven't really discussed is the preview takeaway. Remember when we're, when we're opening the, the left foot and we get to this position right here? Preview takeaway is usually two or three times that you can incorporate in your routine. It's all, you know, uh, personal, how many times you do that. But what you should do is you should check in the book, Maximum Golf Book, to look a little bit more about that preview takeaway. Because what does it mean? It means you are actually previewing all your body parts. What are they doing when you start the takeaway, okay? Um, one of the things John used to always talk about is that there are only two actions for the hands. They cock the wrist and they help turn the shoulders, okay? Now, when you look at those two as actions, the rest of the swing is a reaction. So when you get to the top of the swing, what, start, what will start the swing is the left knee and the left hip, but that then we'll follow with all the reactions, okay? So, we've got we've to start with the hands on the way back, and we start with the left knee and the left hip on the way through. We'll get to that in another segment, but right now, we're gonna go over it once again. Bend from the knees and the hips until the butt of the club is down behind the ball. Recock the wrist, small step, big step, Turn the weight back on the left side. Make sure the right foot is on the ground. From this position right here, we're gonna use the uh, turning press as our trigger. We will then turn the left hip and the left knee, okay? Which will then in turn, turn the right hip and the right knee and capture in our mind what impact is. So, it looks just like this. Nothing moves from the waist up. The turning press is all lower body. So from this position right here, we are going to move the left knee and left hip, like I said, and turn the right knee and the right hip to a point where the right knee is pointing at the ball, the right heel is off the ground, the weight is on the outside of the left foot, and the base of the spine is just in front of the ball. Now, why is it critical to have the base of the spine in front of the ball? Because we have our big circle. We have our big elliptical that um, is our golf swing. And the ball is not at the exact bottom of that. Yeah, it is. But there's, we have to put our, our uh, base of our spine just in front of that bottom point because we're gonna capture the ball first and then take a divot or continue into the tee on a tee shot for the conclusion of our, our shot. But it's very important to understand that the base of the spine for us is where the bottom of the arc is gonna be, all right? So, from, like I said, that position once again, here we are all set up, getting ready to do our turning press. Turning press is turning the left knee and the left hip until 90%. People will always ask, well, how much do I feel on that left side? 90%. You're going to feel 90% at this point of the weight on the left side. The only amount you're going to feel is on the inner part of the right foot. All right. From this position right here, this is impact. This is showing your body what you want it to do and feel like at impact. Also, this is the trigger of our swing. How many times do you get set up in, in, in your shots and you can't pull the trigger? You're thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. Well, 
this gives us that opportunity to have that trigger. All right? So the turning press is what it's going to amount to our trigger in the back swing or the back. <clears throat> now, so that's pretty much it as far as what's going to happen in the golf swing for the setup. The, you set up, you preview, take away, you go through and do the turning press. Now, a lot of times you can do this action, this, this, these feelings in the house and you need to okay you can still have your cocked wrists you can pretend that the club head is down on the ground you can set your body up to the point where the checkpoints are all there in the house so please take it upon yourself to get a practice club and do it in the house especially this time of year uh, the winter is long for some of you so make sure that you use something um, over these next few months before spring and summer hit to get your golf game in shape, okay? So, with that feeling of the turning press, I'm gonna leave you for today. Um, next week, what we'll do is we'll get back into what, um, what happens when we, right after we pull the trigger and start making our back turn, okay? Now remember, John always liked to call it a back turn. You can call it a back swing, it doesn't matter what you want, but he always wanted to make everybody have that feeling that the back was turning toward the target, all right? So, until next week, um, I will see you